N.C. Gibbons writes, I'm creating a monthly page for my baby boy, and I use a sketch to get started. It works fine for one page, but sometimes I need more room for photos and journaling, so a two-page layout would work better. I'm struggling with ways to alter the sketch from one page to two so that it looks right. Glittergirl, can you help N.C. Gibbons supersize singular sketches? Of course I can. To start, I've taken a single page sketch, and that's taken from the schmal.com blog on the 30th of November, if you want to go have a look at the layouts that go along with it. Um, but what I started with was just a standard, simple, single page sketch, and it has two portrait 4x6 photos. Then there are two ways to immediately and very easily extend a single page sketch into a double page, and that's to extend or mirror the design. So where there is a circle embellished some pattern paper here and here and then two four by six photos to extend that I'm just going to take that same thing and keep going so I've extended that strip all along the bottom I've added another two four by six photos and probably another strip of paper here on the side as well or I can mirror that and I can mirror it um, directly so that this just repeats here but the circle is on this side or I can mirror it on an angle. So here, I've just drawn that same original page sketch, so the first page is no change, and then the second one flips. So there's still two four by six photos, but they're at the bottom and they're toward the center. That strip is toward the, the pattern paper strip is on the outside and the circle moves up to the top, which gives me space for a title here and journaling down the bottom and the diagonal. So um, those are two really simple ways to take a single page sketch and extend it into a double page. And there are lots of other ways, but these are the two simplest and they work with most sketches. So you can take any single page sketch and then use one or the other of those ideas to try and um, stretch it to two pages. There are lots of other ways, but I can only show you a little bit in each adventure. So today I am going to show you how I've extended this one to a double page. And just please excuse the messiness of my sketching, but that's how I would um, create a page sketch. So I just wanted to show you what it was like in the real form rather than something cleaned up and computerized. So that's what it would really look like for me. And for that, I'm going to start. I have um, four portrait four by six photos and two background sheets of um, craft cardstock and then I'm going to be working with these papers these three are from the follow your heart collection by my mind's eye they look like this on the back and then this one is Bella Boulevard which is a, um, a blue turquoisey blue um, and aqua chevron and has the multicolored clouds on the other side. Now, the reason I've picked these in is because there's been a few requests of what to do with pattern papers that are printed in the corner. And the reason I hadn't answered it before is because I pretty much always do the same thing with it. I cut it out. I don't use it on the page. I cut it out and put it on top. So um, I'm going to show you that in this two page design today. I'm going to cut these pieces out. I'm still going to use the rest of the pattern paper and um, so that's why I've chosen this corner designed pattern paper um, and I hope you find it useful from one position to the other. So let's get started. First step for me is to cut out the pattern paper design that I'm going to use just as um, a single piece rather than the large sheet. So I just take my time going around the edges of the design with scissors. And it's not really a case of smaller scissors um, is, is better or, or, or anything like that. You do want your scissors to be sharp because otherwise it, it's harder to get around. But what, wor what works more than the scissors being tiny is that if you use the same pair of scissors all the time, you'll start to know exactly how they move. So um, that's, that's just kind of what is more consistent will give you better cutting results. So just pick one pair and use them all the time, the pair that's comfortable in your hands. But lots of people laugh at me because my scissors are kind of giant. Um, but I've been using them so long that they... They work more as an extension of my hand, so if I change to something small for detail cutting, I actually end up worse off. So um, whatever scissors you love, be they big or little, just take that and run with it. And the more you use the same pair, the better off you'll be. So I hope that's useful. Um, so I'm just cutting away at what is the, um, the background, that blue and white 
stripe. I'm going to leave it in here. I'm not going to cut out the inside of that Polaroid. Now, the other option with cutting out designs, of course, is to use a craft knife. If you're good with a craft knife, then awesome, go for it. I am not good with a craft knife. I make lots of mistakes and I hurt myself more than I um, make the paper awesome. So I just use scissors, but either will work. Um, and then I kind of go around the tiniest little pieces where it's a bit awkward and I can sand them down um, with a file if they uh, if they need to be smoothed a bit. And then of course I'll add ink edging to all the pieces as well. Okay, to follow my sketch, I started by adhering the photos first. And because I'm using that extended version, I want the photos to come right up to the middle. If I did the mirrored version, I would have that space that goes all the way around so the photos would be separated. Um, so it depends on how you like your layouts to look in your album as to which would um, work best for you. But when I include a double page, I really like the design to go across. So there aren't any photos cut there or anything. They just meet at the middle of the layout. And from here, then I can add the other elements. So I've cut... Um, two and a half by six strips of the multicolored pattern to go at either side. And then I've cut two inch strips, which need to be trimmed down a bit, um, to go at the bottom here. And that makes up the, um, the majority of this this framework. Then I've got this extra little border piece, so I need to cut a paper piece or a punched strip or a border sticker or something in here and then I have this circle area and my title going across. So the corner pieces of paper that I cut are going to work here as my circle element. Of course this one now looks gigantic if I place it here where the circle is and um, because in the original sketch you can see the paper to the side of the circle, but that's not going to work in this case because then I'm covering up so much of the photo. So instead, I'm going to take that corner piece and I'm not gonna put it all the way to the corner, but nearly so that I'm just, um, just overlapping the photo just a tiny bit, but not very much at all. And then I can look for a place where I could include this piece as well. So the other thing I need to look for is whether I want the embellishment to be even because now I'm, I'm going away from the sketch and, and adding things that are not in the original design. So I need to think about what will be balanced. So if this one is all the way down to the bottom of the page, if I put this one here, I end up with a sort of imbalanced look because... Um, that this gap is higher than this one. It's a bit of a teeter-totter effect while, while everything else is nice and lined up and, and even. So the option then is to take it in um, because if I put it down here, I'm going to end up with that big gap. Or I could take it in here. That's better balanced because there's um, the, it's just following that diagonal rather than jutting out in the corner. Or if I do want to add it down here in the corner, I need to add more to it to create some more layers and, and cover up all that craft that ends up in the gap if I make it evenly spaced. So I think what I'll end up doing is bringing it up here just a little bit to frame that photo edge. And that's where I can start to see things coming together. But I wanted to show you at this point because from here is where you can really change things for your style. You could use this as almost the completed layout. You could just add that little border strip there, adhere these down, add your title and journaling, and that would be a completed page. It would work. Um, but if you want to add more, then you can start tucking other layers underneath. You can add little tabs at the top. You could add a whole other layer of paper underneath all of this to pull it all together if you prefer. So I just wanted to show you all those steps so that you can stop at the um, point that's best for your style. With all these pieces adhered, and I've um, border punched that little strip to go in between, and these two pieces, I've put the pop dots on the back, but I haven't adhered them yet because I want to add a little bit more. Just to um, plan out where I'm going, I'm going to stamp the name of the village up here. I'm going to use the letter stickers for the title here and then add my journaling along here. So I think it will start with some shorter lines here and then have some longer lines on the cardstock. So that's what I'm um, aiming toward. And I want to add a little bit more layering behind these pieces because they have a very layered look anyway. So with those on pop dots, I want to add some flat layers behind. And I had some pattern paper yet that I had pulled out but I hadn't used. So what I've done is just cut some strips. So this is the back of the, um, the piece that I cut these um, accents out of and also this blue stripe here. So the 
back has the brown stripe, and then I'd also pulled out that yellow gingham, which has the aqua quatrefoil on the back. So I just want to start to use these to um, come behind the pieces that are going to be layered up. So since they're in strips, I can just eyeball how much I want because I want it to tuck behind, but to be partially visible. And then as I go, I'll ink all the edges. One little note about double pages and inking. And what I try to do is, if I remember, sometimes I forget and then I, I end up w with it in my book. And it, it's not a huge deal, but I prefer to try and avoid it. That's to avoid ink here on the join because I want this to look like it was one piece of paper. And so I've inked all the other sides, but not that centerpiece. So just something to think about. It may or may not work. Um, so I just want to come up here, and now I'm covering up quite a bit of that punch border piece. Maybe I could tuck it behind that. And just adding a few more layers around this bit of corner embellishment. And then take some of the yellow to add underneath. And obviously you can cut these pieces on the trimmer if you prefer. They all have a design where it's easy to see where a straight line is on the um, on the pattern paper. So that's why I'm just eyeballing with the scissors. And then I want to include this pattern as well. And I think this one's going to need to be a little bit thinner than what I've originally cut. So just come back in. Cut the other side as well. So now I've started to build that little bit of um, of, of a paper layering and I'll repeat that same sort of process over here. Then I've also pulled out a few other embellishments other than the pattern paper and of course you could use just the pattern paper and add the title and there's plenty there for it to be finished. Um, but I had some other bits that I've pulled out. So I, I don't think these are in the store anymore but this was the um, 12 by 12 chipboard set that went with the Be Amazing uh, pat uh, pattern papers from Follow Your Heart. And I had the the kite piece that matches still so I'm, I'm thinking that that can come up here somewhere um, possibly coming up off the top of the page would be good so that still has the backing on it so I can move it around and then um, I also pulled out the Indie Chic uh, chipboard because that has that yellow so I could bring in a bit more with the yellow and the um, Oh Happy Day stamp set and some of the Studio Calico badges that had a travel theme. So that's from the Abroad collection. So I'm just going to repeat the patterns over here and adjust a little bit of embellishment and see where I end up. Once I have all these paper and chipboard pieces in place, now that they're stuck down, I want to go ahead and add the writing before I add any more of the final embellishment because I want to make sure I don't run out of space. As I was placing these, I realized that my journaling and title space is getting smaller and smaller. So um, a few little things. I'm going to use some stamps up here at the top, and I'm using the Oh Happy Day set, which is, these are both Studio Calico, but this one is only available at two piece. And then this is their Stepping Stone Alphabet, which comes with two pieces. It comes with the solid and then the outline. So I'm going to use both up here. And I'm going to start with the little This is an Adventure stamp. And I'm just going to stamp that in line with the edge here. And then I'm going to go to the lettering and with the lettering I'm going to use two ink pads one for the solid and one for the outline so that the solid works as a shaded lettering and then the outline makes it more um, legible so for the shade the shaded bit I'm going to use just a Versamark ink pen Let's see how these look when they're layered up so you take the solid letter 
And the Versamark, if you haven't used before, it's a watermark ink pad. So it just leaves you a darker tone of whatever paper you stamp onto. It doesn't have an actual color itself, but it shades in whatever is there. And then I'm going to take the outline. To finish, I added in the writing and then um, added in the title with the map theme, uh, map printed stickers by Studio Calico. And to pull up this little bit of map print to match the rest of the lettering, I pulled out an asterisk a little star from the thicker sheet and added one of those up here. But then I also wanted to pull this lettering down to this corner, so I stamped a little bit on um, some of the pattern paper and tucked that underneath. Now, the Versamark doesn't work quite the same on pattern paper as it does on cardstock, so in this case I used a lighter brown ink pad instead of the Versamark, but um, if you use a lot of cardstock in your work, then Versamark works really well to just create that that um, shaded effect. Then just a little sprinkling of um, mist in the two corners to pull everything together. And this is a, a sketch where you could stop at any point. So you could add even more at this point. You could start putting in gems and pearls on the diagonal. You could add in more layers of paper underneath here. Or you could not have added quite as much as I did. So I'm hoping this is somewhere a happy medium. And um, I hope you will take a sketch this week and try and stretch it to two pages by using either the extend or mirror technique. And if this is something that you're really interested in, you may want to check out the Hitchhiker's Guide to Scrapbooking because we talk a little bit about this as well with um, taking a single page sketch and getting more from it, including stretching to a two page. Or you might want to check out Jen Gallagher's um, free class here at Two Peas in a Bucket called Stretch Your Sketch, which has 12 different lessons on different things to do with sketches. So I hope you've enjoyed and I thank you very much for watching. Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.